आर्काइव्स ऑफ प्रसार भारती प्रेजेंट्स द टाइमलेस ट्रेजर ऑफ गोल्डन एरा The story of democracy since its birth is full of great speeches made in public halls. Greek senates and Roman forums provided a stage where brilliant orators made stirring speeches and swayed public opinion. Democracy is a game of numbers and there always is a risk that rhetoric may unseat reason and let passions and emotions run riot it is in the light of this experience that the committee system has evolved it puts its faith in the wisdom of mature politicians who working in a small group can rise above party politics and provide solutions in national interest डिबेट कितने विषयों पर होगा कितने विषय पर आप छानबीन गिलोटिन की व्यवस्था देख ही रहे गिलोटिन हो गया सब बिल सब चीज गिलोटिन हो गया जल्दी से बिल पास हो गया तो इसलिए ये सोचा गया कि कमेटी सिस्टम भी रहना जरूरी है सलाहकार समिति भी रहना जरूरी है कि ताकि ज्यादा से ज्यादा नियंत्रण संसद का सरकार पर बना रहे द डिबेट इन द हाउस आर ऑफ एन एक्रोमोनियस एंड पार्टीजान लॉयल्टीज इन जेंडर ग्रेट हीट but they do serve an important purpose after the strident expression of differences discord subsides the reconciliation of conflicting points of view can begin this is what the committees facilitate cooperation among the members allows the committees to focus on substantial issues and seek solutions in a spirit of constructive give and take our home to the sacrifices that our women have it is not that because the parliament is not uh, functioning the debate has shifted the debate started there already because the debate which takes place in the parliament first of all we don't have so much time in the parliament to debate it threadbare everything in great details especially the working and functioning but in the committees because there is no limit of the time uh, everything is discussed very thoroughly every legislation has to go first through the standing committee and the standing committee without any prejudice without any partisan uh, opinion sends this bipartisan suggestions to the house the engagement colloquy with the super chair of the committee on rules and ask the, the US congress has a very effective system of committees the chairman of any committee of the congress exercises great power our committee system has been inspired by such parliamentary functioning some committees are the legacy of the constitutional arrangements that were put in place during the british rule in india the us congress in session is congress on exhibition while congress in committees is congress at work so uh, the meaning is that more serious work gets done in committees and so far as the parliament in plenary is concerned it's more for um, public exhibition now that may not be strictly true about india but the fact remains that um, very often it is not appreciated that more solid work substantial work meaningful work gets done in committees parliamentary committees are of two kinds ad hoc committees and the standing committees ad hoc committees are appointed for a specific purpose and they cease to exist when they finish the task assigned to them and submit a report the committee system in indian parliament is a legacy of the committee system in the british parliament The Government of India Act had provided for two major financial committees. These were the Public Accounts Committee and the Estimates Committee. The members serving in these committees were charged with the responsibility of monitoring government expenditure. Public Accounts Committee is the oldest committee of parliament. Financial accountability of the government to parliament is very largely ensured. through the public accounts committee satta paksh ka koi bhi vyakti nahi banaya jata hai public accounts committee ka chairman jab dekhenge aap vipaksh ka 
कि मतलब इतना छानबीन का ये इसीलिए इस प्रजातांत्रिक जो पद्धति हमारी संसदीय प्रणाली है इसमें जितना सुधार की गुंजाइश है जितना मौका है चीज़ों को छानबीन करके देखने का और कहने का और सुधारने का किसी दूसरी व्यवस्था में नहीं हो सकता The Committee on Public Accounts consists of 15 members selected by the Lok Sabha and 7 members of the Rajya Sabha are associated with it. The main duty of the committee is to ascertain whether the money granted by parliament has been spent by government within the scope of the demand. PSC has a very very important role. People generally think that this only goes after the report of the CAG comes. We don't examine CAG's report, we examine the ministries. The function of the PSC is, in one sentence, if I say, is to chase the rupee from where it comes and to where it goes. The PSC has played a pivotal role in exposing the accused and to start prosecution. The organization of the Commonwealth Games in New Delhi in 2010 became controversial due to the allegations of corruption at the top and large-scale financial irregularities. The opposition put the government in the dock and demanded that a joint parliamentary committee or a JPC be constituted. What has come to be known as JPC is not in the rules. JPCs have been appointed and the latest fifth one was appointed now four have been appointed earlier the first one was on bufors jpcs have been appointed under the inherent powers of parliament to enquire into any matter other committees are not supposed to do investigation in that sense the jpcs have been doing investigation uh, most of in in what are called scandals i was on one jpc the harshad mehta scam on the side of the government and in the other which is generally called the ketan parik scam on the, in the opposition benches there we tend to be uh, partisan towards the end towards the time when we are writing up the report but probably not that partisan in the earlier phases when you are taking evidence the committee system of the indian parliament has undergone enormous changes there have been new committees that came to be constituted and um, uh, the early speakers particularly uh, mavalankar played a major role in terms of uh, creating very distinct committees it was the first speaker of lok sabha mavalankar who suggested that not everything of the routine nature should be left to the discretion and proposed the establishment of a business affairs committee Subsequently the estimates committee too was relieved a little when its subcommittee on public undertakings was hived into a separate committee Very few reports are taken up by the uh, the public accounts committee a committee on public enterprises state undertakings the that also the other part because because a lot of uh, economic work and the governance work and administrative work which the department of ministry used to do was uh, given over to the and read rightly to the public undertakings india had opted for a mixed economy model in its five years plans for economic development this meant that while the private sector would continue the commanding heights of the economy would be governed by the state infrastructure power generation were declared state monopolies at the time when economic reforms were ushered in major public undertakings were described as nine gems the navratans the committee on public undertakings began as a subcommittee of the estimates committee The function of the Committee on Public Undertakings are to examine the reports and accounts of public undertakings, to examine the reports of the controller and auditor general on the public undertakings, to examine in the context of the autonomy and efficiency of the public undertakings. The Committee on Public Undertakings continue to be trusted with the onerous responsibility of ensuring efficient and corruption-free working of these institutions people belonging to scheduled caste in india 
number over 1400 million and comprise almost 17% of the total population. The Committee on the Welfare of Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe consists of 20 members elected by the Lok Sabha and 10 members of Rajya Sabha are associated with it. The Scheduled Tribes total about 8% of India's population and are distributed in varying numbers in different states. In the northeastern states of India, the tribes constitute a majority. They have all unique problems of development. The challenge is to let them share the benefits of modernization without disrupting their traditional way of life and eroding their colorful identity. For all these reasons, the framers of the constitution were of the view that it is imperative to provide for a time-bound scheme of reservations to allow them to compete with others on a level playing field. Constitutional safeguards have brought about an improvement in their condition. But the progress has been slow and many obstacles remain. It has been found necessary to establish a National Commission for Scheduled Caste and Tribes. The Committee on Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes has been charged with the responsibility of considering the report submitted by the SC and ST Commission and to monitor the implementation of various central government schemes and programs for their benefit. Women comprise half of India's population. It is ironical that despite all these achievements, the majority of Indian women continue to suffer from disabilities and discriminations. This committee came into being on 29th April 1997 as a consequence of identical resolutions adopted by both the Houses of Parliament on the occasion of International Women's Day on 8th March 1996. The committee consists of 30 members. The term of the committee is of one year. Its members have taken a very keen interest in the passage of the Women's Reservation Bill. I remember they were when the Women's Bill was being discussed by the Standing Committee of the Parliament. It is a Rajya Sabha Committee and we went, we travelled all over the country and we took evidences from the women's organisation, from various sections of the society to give an opinion, what do they consider, uh, how to empower the women through this uh, legislation of 33% reservation in the parliament. The committee have been primarily mandated with the task of reviewing and monitoring the measures taken by the union government in the direction of securing for women equality, status and dignity in all matters. The Committee on Empowerment of Women scrutinizes the report submitted by the National Commission for Women and can also suggest on its own measures for the improvement of the condition of women. How does Parliament impose its own discipline, committee on privileges? If you come here and abuse Parliament, Parliament itself exercises power. There's nowhere out to go. That's the Privileges Committee. So Privileges Committee actually, of which I remember earlier, it's like a court almost, and here's the accused person. The Committee on Privileges performs the task of ensuring that no one violates the dignity of the House or infringes upon the privileges of its members that are necessary to perform their duties freely and fearlessly. Anyone who breaches these privileges can be held in contempt and punished according to the laws of the land. Indira Gandhi was charged with the contempt of the house and breach of privilege after the emergency. She was arrested and imprisoned. An interesting case was the case of R.K. Karanjia of the Blitz newspaper, who was summoned before the bar of the house and admonished. During an election campaign, he had lampooned a member of the house, J.B. Kriplani.
Committee on Private Members Bill and Resolutions consists of 15 members and the Deputy Speaker is its Chairman. The function of the committee are to allot time to private members' bills and resolutions, to examine private members' bills seeking to amend the Constitution before their introduction in Lok Sabha. The Indian Railways are the arteries of our nation. They are a unique instrument that strengthens our democracy by bridging and reducing geographical and emotional distance. The Railway Convention Committee is an ad hoc committee. It consists of 18 members. Out of these, 12 members are from Lok Sabha nominated by the Speaker and 6 members are from Rajya Sabha nominated by the Chairman. By convention, the Minister of Finance and Minister of Railways are members of the committee. The Railways are amongst the largest employers of the government servants. The Railway Convention Committee, 1949, was the first committee after independence. The committee responsible for monitoring and overseeing the work of this ministry is kept exceptionally busy. Its contribution helped the ministry to improve its services and efficiency. The big change that came up in the committee system was in 1989 and in 1992-93 when we have something called departmentally related committees, which went in a way the entire policy of, um, of the ministry concerned. A far-flung system of 17 departmentally related standing committees came into being in April 1993. The functions of these committees are consideration of demands for grants, Examination of bill referred to it by the Chairman Rajya Sabha or the Speaker Lok Sabha. Consideration of national basic long-term policy documents presented to the House and referred to the committee by the Chairman Rajya Sabha or the Speaker Lok Sabha. These committees are related to every department. They are known as department-related standing committees of the Parliament, like Home Affairs. The Ministry of Home Affairs performs many sensitive duties. Although law and order is a state subject, the central government too is entrusted with securing the unity and integrity of the nation. For many years, India has had to cope with violent insurgency in many states on the periphery, fomented by separatist elements encouraged from beyond the borders. More recently, Terrorists have sought to create havoc by violent acts. The Indian Parliament, the symbol of the sovereignty of our Republic, has been attacked. Mumbai, the financial capital of the nation, has suffered bloodshed more than once. The Standing Committee's contribution in this context, though not always visible, has contributed significantly to the peace process. Agriculture provides employment and livelihood to largest number of Indians. The growth of agriculture and allied sectors is crucial in the overall performance of Indian economy. It accounts for about 58% of employment in the country. It also plays a pivotal role in ensuring nutrition for the entire nation. Animal husbandry and dairy development plays a prominent role in rural economy along with agriculture. In recent years, there has been some concern about the slow growth in the sector. However, we should not overlook that in the years since independence, India has made a steady progress in this field. The Ministry has benefited greatly from the advice of the Standing Committee attached to it. Though the Green Revolution came about 
before the formation of departmental committees, the perspective planning for the future is now in the domain of this committee. I'm a member of the Consultative Committee on Defense. There are several other members also. Some of them are very focused. They will come prepared, ask questions, very leading questions, so that uh, the ministry has to explain what is happening and why it is not happening. The only danger is this, that the sensitive issues, uh, it will be on the sweet will of the minister to stop at a particular point. Perhaps there the, the, the uh, Lakshman Rekha is there, that beyond this you don't go. India's armed forces are among the largest in the world. The country has had to fight four wars thrust upon it. Out of these wars, three have been with the immediate neighbor Pakistan and one has been with China. It has had to remain vigilant to protect its unity and integrity and safeguard its core values of democracy, secularism and peaceful coexistence. The past decade has witnessed the deterioration in our security environment as global terrorism has targeted India. The Standing Committee on Defence has members, many of whom have specialised knowledge of the subject. It is remarkable that despite sharp differences on many issues, the government and the opposition have managed to arrive at a consensus on national security. The unity and integrity of the nation is an extremely sensitive matter on which no compromise can be made. I have been in the External Affairs Committee, I have been in the Defence Committee. There's never been any problem in the committees. And all the work, the looking into the actual details of the expenditure, uh, every year the budgets and all, those are done by the committee. So the committee system, I think, has become a major factor, positive factor in, in parliamentary function. The foreign policy of India, formulated by the first Prime Minister, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, was designed to realize the dreams of the founding fathers to make a nation independent, economically self-reliant and socially just. Indian diplomacy in the Nehruvian period was recognized the world over as democratic and anti-imperialistic. Though India was economically underdeveloped, yet it could exercise great influence in the international arena due to the success of this foreign policy. After Nehru, his successors Lal Bahadur Shastri and Indira Gandhi followed in his footsteps and continued to conduct India's international relations on the principles of peaceful coexistence. By the time Rajiv Gandhi assumed power, the world had changed dramatically. India could not remain a prisoner of past. Economic liberalization transformed India. The ministry supervised by the Standing Committee has ensured that India emerges as a power commensurate with its size and heritage and takes its rightful place in the Committee of Nations. This has been made possible due to the expert advice and guidance provided by the members of the Standing Committee, many of whom have experience of diplomacy and international affairs. India is fortunate to have a large population that is also young. The nation can boast of an energetic workforce that will be able to work productively for decades to come. Many other nations envy this. However, for India to develop and prosper, it is essential that this population remains healthy, free from disease and malnutrition. The Ministry for Health and Family Welfare attaches utmost importance 
to primary immunization to make newborn children invulnerable to crippling diseases like polio. Pre and postnatal care are accorded topmost priority. The Committee on Health and Family Welfare ably supervises this work and strives to ensure that the intended benefits reach the masses without wastage. I think our committee system is something which is working very well. And the real work of Parliament actually gets done in the committees more than in the House. So while it is true that the House is not doing as well as it ought to be doing in a, in a democracy, our committees are evolving, maturing and contributing in a very significant way. I hope at least that bipartisanship or non-partisanship that we find in, in the committees where uh, all kind of resolutions, mostly uh, recommendations, are unanimous. Some uh, exceptions there, but by and large, unanimous, cutting across party lines. Excellent democratic tradition. Committees have played a very significant role in the evolution of Indian parliamentary system. They have steered historic legislations, carried out investigations and in public interest, encouraged consensus to emerge from heated debate and strengthen the roots of our democracy.